warm greetings to everyone hoping all of you are doing well let me start this video on economy of things with outline and learning outcomes we will begin with internet of things we'll understand what internet of thing is how it is different from the internet or web network We'll then move on to its usefulness. We will use a case study of the complete disruptive technology cycle of the industry to understand Internet of Things and its uses. With three case studies explaining the scope of Internet of Things, we will decipher economy of things and its challenges. In the end, we would be enriched with a preliminary understanding of Internet of Things and economies of things such that we should be able to identify these around us and research. So let's begin. From the age of discovery to the first wave of globalization or in other words the industrial revolution to present time which is the fourth wave of globalization the era of information technology and digitalization, the world has indeed seen rapid changes in terms of the dominant factor of the economic system. The present time is the era of information and data. The printing press has made circulation or sharing of information cheap, but the internet is the one which has made it almost free. It is the internet which enables the information to be indexed, searched, shared and modified easily and nearly costlessly. The internet has made long distance, distance communication easy and less time consuming and also cheap so now humans can interact with humans digitally over web of network we have also seen that due to touch screen technology and virtual assistant technology Humans are now able to interact with digital devices and these digital devices are then interacting with humans. So it's human to digital devices to human interactions. The third kind of interaction that we are now nowadays wit witnessing is when the device is interacting with a digital device like one digital device in, is interacting with another digital devices but of course they are not doing it on their own they are controlled by the users and they are doing so they are interacting just uh, for the utility purpose of the users only so the example of this is that when your smartwatch instructs the uh, home smart light to be turned off or on so this is digital device to digital devices interaction now the other examples of this kind of interaction are uh, the fitness watches right the smart watches and and the smart tv uh, lights fridge all these are like smart lights smart free fridge the Alexa, uh, Google Home, Siri, Cortana, all these are the examples of the, this digital device to digital device interaction where one digital device is interacting with the, with the another digital devices and uh, the purpose of the interaction is uh, the consumer satisfaction of course. Now way back uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Ashton he is uh, one of the British uh, technology pioneers and uh, co-founder of uh, Auto ID Center at MIT has coined the phrase Internet of Things. According to him, the humans are time limited and are unable to capture 
too many real world things such as the data about the fuel that powers are heating or drivers uh, drives our cars engines therefore according to him the internet just represents the idea and not the things internet is not the representative of the watch i am wearing or it's not the representing uh, it's not representing any other uh, thing which i consume we human beings are dependent on the things right right so now the idea is why not use computer generated data analyze it and share it over the internet or the network to make the consumption of things more efficient yeah so in this way if if we use computer generated data which is analyzed then we would know when things need to be replaced and when they need to be repaired uh, or recalled right all these are possible because computers are allowing us to observe identify and understand the world without the limitation of human centered data now i i suppose you might be getting some idea of internet of things right in simple words if i have to you know um summarize internet of things then uh, internet of thing is 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 any everyday object it could be your watch it could be your uh, refrigerator that you are using it could be the pen that you are using it could be any everyday uh, objects or thing or any consumer goods uh, which is controlled by the user uh, that is necessary that is the mandatory requirement that it must be controlled by the user and those objects or things which we are using or which we are consuming daily are connected over internet or any uh, home network yeah and they can send and receive data who are they the devices the devices can send and receive data the internet of things represents a network in which objects and sensors are interconnected they are interconnected they are controlled they are monitored and optimized through wired cables wireless networks or hybrid system but ultimately the user has the control uh, over the internet of things having the central uh, uh, you know the the the, the user uh, has the last control last last call on the uh, call on the internet of things mm, but apart from that you know these uh, devices which are interconnected they are able to switch on and off the web and uh, we have you know automation processes for smart uh, smart applications and all so yeah so this is what internet of things um, uh, is it is the all the everyday objects and things which we are using possible with with the possibility of being you know converted into smart yeah so it could be the ring i am wearing or it could be the pen with which i am writing or it could be the shoe i am wearing or socks i am wearing or the pills that i am taking as a medicine um anything anything which can be connected over the internet or the home network or any kind of public or private network enabling the devices to send and receive data that's internet of things now i hope you have understood what internet of things is now the next question is if internet of thing is the interconnection of devices those devices which we earlier were 
mm, we couldn't even come uh, you know uh, imagine that a pen could uh, be connected to another pen so what kind of technology a pen with a simple refill uh, refill and uh, you know uh, uh, could be connected with the other pen right so what kind or what type of technologies are enabling internet of things how these devices are able to uh, automate uh, uh, how the automation process is possible in these devices the answer to this question is the iot enabling technologies iot meaning internet of things the internet of things enabling technologies such as uh, radio frequency identification and sensor technology and next we have big data big data I hope everybody uh, has uh, heard uh, big data because it is uh, a, a, a word which is a, a buzzword uh, nowadays uh, then third is blockchain and then we have artificial intelligence which is AI and then we also have cloud computing the cloud storage and cloud computing these are the key iot technologies which enable the digital devices to digital devices interaction which is uh, of course it's it's internet of things yeah now uh, now let's talk about the uses of the Internet of Things. So now we have understood what Internet of Things uh, is, how we can define it, how, uh, what are the, you know, the, the key features of Internet of Things and how it is possible, which technologies m make Internet of Things possible. Now let's talk about its users. Compared to other information and uh, communication technologies, the IoT constitutes uh, an intelligent and autonomous solution which enables organizations to respond to demands more easily and efficiently. Since it's uh, smart, since it is using all the data and processing in real time, therefore, it saves time okay it saves our response time to the demands so it has the potential for the manufacturing construction services and the supply chain and logistic sector the internet of thing is also valuable for companies implementing circular economy framework or CE framework or which uh, the, uh, which the companies having the business model as circular business models uh, now how uh, the internet of things can be uh, valuable for the uh, for the companies which are using circular business model because internet of things increases the visibility and control over supply chains enhancing efficiency and innovation how it increases visibility how it increases control over supply chains again the answer is the real-time collection of the data and the analysis of that data and also the data collection is again simplified because it's the devices which are collecting the data it's it doesn't involve uh, human uh, interaction as such the devices are the one which are collecting the data the devices are the one which are um, analyzing the data and it's a machine to machine communication it's a machine to machine communication so it's not that the data collected by the machine needs to be deciphered by a uh, by a human being you know and analyzed by the human being it's not like that it's just that the machines will collect the data and machines are the one which are going to uh, analyze it simplify it and then 
communicate it to the other machine yeah so it simplifies the data collection it increases the visibility and it increases the control over the supply chains which of course benefits the uh, the, uh, the 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 business model which are you know uh, following the circular economy frameworks which are on the circular economy uh, framework and IoT also uh, enables the exchange of the data. It also um, it's 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 energy efficient. It manages the energy and and the asset tracking tracking is also possible. Now the examples are examples of you know these uh, asset tracking tracking energy management and exchange of data. All these are the the points that we have highlighted. Uh, as the um, users uh, of Internet of Things for the companies which are using circular economy frameworks. The one example which I've taken from uh, Moreno et al. 2017, in that paper, they are describing a case in which a 3D printed shoe with integrated sensors uh, can alert the user whenever the repair is needed. Yeah. So now that see, now the simple shoe uh, has been modified and it has been digitized, so that the the shoe is collecting the data, and shoe is the shoe is going to tell us or shoe is going to um, you know indicate that when the repair is needed, and many a times uh, it, it might be possible it it. It might be possible that the shoe, um, you know, uh, send this data to some other devices. Uh, of course, to to the mobile app. Of course, the mobile app, and through your mobile app, you'll uh, get to know that your shoe needs uh, a job uh, repair job, right? Yeah. So. The other example is uh, the development of marketplace for connecting buyers and sellers of manufacturing uh, services, raw materials and products within global supply chains. Now again, again, uh, we as the, the Internet of Things will save the time. Uh, will uh, reduce all the transaction costs which are incurred in you know in, in, in finding first of all search cost in finding the uh, appropriate uh, supplier for the raw material and then negotiating with the uh, supplier uh, negotiating the terms bargaining everything uh, the, the whole process of searching the suitable supplier and then um, then the transaction cost, the uh, transport cost is also involved, right? So, through Internet of Things, the you can say the marketplace, you know, the, the marketplace would not be like what they are now because all the buyers and the sellers will be connected on a digital platform and there they will be interacting there they will be um, you know finding a suitable like buyers, buyer will find a suitable seller and seller will find a suitable a buyer and uh, since the data is collected by like the machine is collecting the data and the Internet of Things enables the da data transparency. Uh, it is also reducing the imperfectness in the information. Yeah, and it is also shortening the global supply chains. So these are the uh, uses of the Internet of Things. The primary uh, uses of Internet of Things, which I have uh, listed down, and uh, now uh, let's move on to the case study which uh, I have listed, uh, I have highlighted in the very first slide of this uh, presentation. 
uh, it's about the case study of an industry uh, which has undergone the complete cycle of uh, disruptive uh, technology you know disruptive technology meaning that uh, due to technology the industry has seen a disruptive phase and then later on transformed and then a rebirth of that industry has happened so the aviation industry or airline industry of the US uh, has uh, been picked up for this case study and all the data uh, has been taken up from the um, IBM uh, Institute for Business Value uh, Report on Economy of Things. So this is the case study of uh, US, Air, US Air industry to understand a full cycle of data driven disruption or technology disruption in 1953 ibm created the world's first digital online reservation system namely semi automated booking and reservations engine for american airlines till the 1970s Online bookings had become a standard and in 1978 the regulatory infrastructure was abolished and all physical assets were digitized uh, which could now be freely exchanged in the deregulated market. Despite experiencing profit uh, despite uh, experiencing profit plunges from 2000 to 2012 the industry has now fully recovered and been consistently profitable. So now in this case study, we have seen that uh, since the advent of uh, semi-automated -automat booking and reservations uh, engine, um, the, this was the digital revolution for this uh, industry. This is the digital disruption we are talking about, data-driven disruption or technology disruption. So. Um, yeah, so do the, the disruption has happened and the, uh, the industry has transformed. In 1970s, the bookings, online bookings, bookings have become standard and in 1978, the regulatory infrastructure um, was uh, abolished and the, all the physical assets were digitized and exchanged um, on the online platforms only and the free market was established right so this is the transformation phase of the industry and uh, rebirth will say that you know uh, that after 2012 now the the airline industry has uh, reborn and uh, is on its recovery phase yeah so uh, this case study suggests that um, things that can be fully represented on the networks or internet uh, such as like in the in the case study it was uh, airline tickets initially it was airline tickets tickets later on um, it was all the physical assets which can be digitized uh, yeah so uh, th the uh, other other uh, uh, assets also like uh, music, traffic uh, information, not asset but goods or services like music, traffic information, weather, news, talks, uh, tickets, train tickets, concert tickets, uh, airline tickets, uh, etc. can be bought and sold online, bringing liquidity to markets and, in, uh, and uh, improving efficiency. So, uh, the, this statement itself highlights scope of Internet of Things. Internet of Things where the devices are connected over a network with another devices, we can bring any 
Uh, we can bring music, we can bring traffic information, weather, news, docs, tickets, etc. on network and then they can be bought and sold online. Thus, the market is more liquid and there is more, uh, you know, sh sharing of information is even, it's symmetric, it, it's not exactly symmetrical, but uh, near to symmetric. It could be exactly symmetric. So it's, it's complete information, um, liquidity to market as well as the information. There is a complete flow of the information leading to the improvement in the efficiency. Yeah. So the scope of the Internet of Things first is, in, is for the industries which are not so technology intensive. The industries which are not so technology in intensive can gain efficiency by developing data collected from IoT devices used in that industries. The second scope is for the credit market. In the credit market, we have seen um, that uh, you know the credit market is is typically suffers from uh, asymmetric information. Uh, moral moral hazard the problem of moral ha hazard and uh, the adverse selection right so for credit market and and the associated problem the accurate risk analysis or mapping is possible due to instrumentation and digitization of information this will lead to the uh, solution of the problem we'll see how later on the third scope is for creation of uh, liquid marketplaces of physical assets by enabling uh, real-time um, discovery and uh, usability and payment of these physical assets. Now from the previous uh, case study of the airline, the US airline industry, the three vectors of disruption of the Internet of Things around which models should be built can be noted down. The three vectors are creating asset marketplaces, managing risk, and improving efficiencies. These are the three vectors, or you can say these are the three pillars around which any economic model based on Internet of Things should be built. Creation of asset marketplaces requires instant search, like it will enable uh, instant search it will uh, enable use and payment for available physical asset which is digitized of course you we have to digitize physical assets and then the second uh, pillar or the second vector or the second necessity for the successful economic model around internet of things is risk management reduced which is going to reduce moral hazard and risk and credit assessment of digital uh, digital transaction print so the all the digital transactions uh, with with digital print uh, uh, the data is generated there that can be analyzed uh, and the risk and credit assessment can be done which will help in reduction of moral hazard uh, the solution of moral hazard problem reduce moral hazard uh, moral hazard. The last pillar is improvements in operational efficiency. Um, operational, the highlights of this pillar or this vector is reduced supervision, transportation, and uh, marketing cost. Supervision cost, transportation cost, and marketing cost will be saved uh, save upon. Uh, if we were to use Internet of Things and uh, develop business model around Internet of Things. Now, um, let's start with our first case study of uh, the possible business models uh, using Internet of Things. The first uh, case study is uh, around real is on real estate. Uh, real estate of the US. Again, the case study has been picked up from the IBM report. Uh, so in, in, in the US, the 67% uh, of the total billions, uh, 12, sorry, pardon, 12 billion square feet in the US is utilized. Only 67% of the available uh, land 
in the US uh, available asset real estate assets uh, not exactly land but all the buildings so 67% of the 12 billion square feet uh, of the real estate assets in the US are utilized in the US large tenants dominates the market large size tenants dominate the market those occupying more than 50,000 square feet account for 36 percent of all rented space so we can see that there is um, the sub sub optimality and uh, illiquidity problem in commercial real estate the commercial real estate is suboptimal and it's illiquid now the IOT can help correct this market failure through instrumentation and digitization. Sensors coupled with understanding of utilization can create liquid marketplace of real estate. Of course by enabling real time discovery, usability and payment. For example, let's say we are able to digitize a real estate, real asset. Uh, let's say a building or group of buildings we are able to digitize these buildings second we need to develop a digital service marketplace once it has been done a digitally tagged real asset can be rented during off hours for conferences seminars lectures parties etc yeah so this is how the creation of asset marketplace will lead to improvements in operational efficiency we have seen in this case the real assets were digitized and the marketplace has been created which leads to improvements in operational efficiency because the real asset the the real estate building which was earlier not occupied during off hours can now be rented and uh, the profits can be earned another example of such kind of creation of asset marketplaces and then improving uh, operational efficiency are these two apps uh, one is car to go and the second one is park together car to go is available in 26 cities in europe and north america with more than 8 lakh users this is the first car sharing system in the world without fixed rental locations Park Together is another innovative solution for searching and reserving parking spaces in cities. The next case study is on the small and medium businesses credit market in South Af Africa. We will see how the IoT, the Internet of Things, can solve the problem in uh, credit market we are considering the small and medium businesses of South Africa. The banking system here serves large enterprises, the large enterprises and only the formal, formal SMB or small and medium businesses with credit and other financial services, but not to the informal SMBs. The informal SMBs are accounting for 51% of the market and they have little to no access to reasonably priced credit and they amount to only 8% of all bank lending. This is because of, of the financial institution having no credit, credit profile to lend against and no reliable methods of uh, contract reinforcement. So there is a problem of uh, the classic uh, problem of asymmetric information which is adverse selection and moral hazard. It's the classic case of moral hazard and adverse selection. Now here the internet of things can help, um, uh, uh, help out us 
to solve these uh, uh, problems and, and solve the credit market failure. The financial institution could better uh, understand and uh, price, uh, better understand the price risk associated with informal SMBs um, that were previously too opaque to deal with. The remote tracking and virtual disabling of assets and devices could help improve borrower uh, behavior and reduce loan delinquency. Yeah, so this is the case of creation of asset markets and risk management. Moving on to the third case, the third case is on the not so technologically intensive industries. Here we are taking the case of farming and again the farming in the USA. Uh, this case study is also uh, we taken from uh, IBM Institute for Business Value report. Now the crop yield in, in farming, the crop yield are uh, the result of a complex biochemical and physical interactions of land, seed and weather uh, over a growing season and are subject to uncertain variation. The uncertain weather, uncertain um, soil fertility, it's there, there is variability in soil, uh, soil fertility, uh, water availability, etc. There is also, you know, cobweb phenomena for agricultural prices. Uh, now, how the Internet of Things can help you? Internet of Things, using Internet of Things and especially the sensor technologies, uh, uh, coupling with the real-time data, uh, the collection of the uh, accurate uh, position information um, can be, you know, the, 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 the accurate position information can be collected and can be correlated with the production decision and farm yields with, uh, or with envi environmental factors. The correlation of production decision and farm yields with, with environmental factors uh, can be <coughs> collected and can be assessed. How can they be collected? They can be collected with the um, devices like drones uh, and um, the spraying machines and all, you know, the, the machines which are used uh, for farming. Um, so these uh, technologies can enable uh, more intensive farming of land and better integrated uh, farm management practices that will bolster uh, productivity through efficiency. So here we have seen the creation of asset market and uh, improvements in operational efficiency. You can see in the graph also, the graph is again taken from IBM report. You can see uh, in the graph that for the US agriculture, um, the uh, Northwest Europe, uh, Asia relative to Northwest Europe, Asia, and uh, the 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 U.S. productivity per hectare was low, uh, but if IoT uh, enabled agriculture is used, then the productivity will multiply it by 2.25 times, and uh, industry disruption the the bottom most part. Uh, the real GDP will increase by 2% and the food prices will decrease by 6%. Uh, and in for the previous case studies also, let me just uh, uh, have a look at uh, these figures also, you know, for the, the credit market failure uh, case, you can see that um, this industry disruption, again, disruption is not negative uh, uh, here, disruption meaning that the break point, you know, a new technology, uh, data centric technology has been in, uh, has been introduced. Uh, since that point, um, the GDP will grow by 0.8 percent, and the interest rate will fall by 1 percent. This, of course, these are predicted uh, 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 statistics, but um, but uh, th 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 this is what is achievable if the internet of things are used for uh, creation of uh, asset markets uh, and then 
uh, once the asset market is create, uh, created, the operational efficiency can be improved upon and the risk can also be managed. Now, uh, so we now understand what Internet of Things is. We understand the uses of Internet of Things. We understand the scope of Internet of Things. We know on which pillars or on which vectors or around which, uh, what should be the parameters or factors we should consider when we are developing the model, the business model around Internet of Things, right? Now, where economy of things come in all of this, right? So, um, to answer this, let me just, uh, I, I request you to imagine a scenario uh, when these digitized assets can exchange services on their own. Yeah, let's say that you want, you are working um, in, in, you are working at your workplace and uh, the office hour is up and you have to uh, go to your home. Suppose your digital watch sensed that you need a cab drive home. So what the digital watch will do, suppose imagine this, that your digital watch sense that you need a cab drive home, it will locate and uh, locates the cab for you, it will book the cab for you, the nearly available cab in real time, it will book it for you. And then it will also terminate the ride for you. Once you reach the home, it will also terminate the ride for you. You don't have to make the payment with the existing widely used mode of payment such as cash payments, UPI or wallet payments. You don't have to make the payments. Yeah, is this possible? Yes, it is possible. It is possible that the ca cab is being booked by your digital uh, watch and that too you are not prompting the digital watch to do that digital watch is doing it on its own okay and also consider also consider that on your way back home the cab you know the cab has is asking the cab is asking for your permission to um, uh, to receive an electric charge cab the cab is uh, driven electrically it's it's an electric car and it's out of charge it's it needs it needs charge electric charge so it asks for your permission and you nodded yes not nodded yes but you you know uh, press the button that okay you can um, you can stop and get yourself charged so uh, the next step would be that cab would locate the nearby charging station and get itself charged now for each electric charge for each electric power or unit of power um, the the car is making micro payments for each unit of electric power the car is itself making continuous micro payments which we are naming as payments stream the micro payments are currency exchanged per unit time for per unit electric power in this case it's per unit electric power but micro payments are the continuous uh, currency exchange we'll talk about what kind of currency but as of now um, this is what is uh, we are contemplating okay so what is happening here the car the cab the cab has located the um, charging station and then the car is making the micro payments per unit time or uh, per unit time per unit electric power 
and the charging station is providing the cap with the unit pearl okay the moment the payment stream is stopped by the cap that moment the charging station will stop providing the electric power and the transaction will be an ended the charging station got the payment for the service cab got the service service in the form of uh, the uh, electric charge now this whole scenario is possible it is possible and um, due to internet of things yeah the 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 key point here is the payment stream we have seen that in the, in under internet of things the the digital devices can interact so the interaction between the charging station and the cabs are possible these kind of interactions are possible this kind of interaction between cabs and charging station is possible but the question here is how will, how can charge pay make this payment stream make the m m continuous micro payments to the charging station it cannot uh, give uh, no take out the uh, currency note from its wallet and give it to charging station this is what humans do we humans we we do, we uh, take out the notes out of the wallet and then uh, give it to the other uh, uh, human being uh, in exchange for the uh, the consumption goods or, or services right now this payment stream is possible due to distributed ledger technology now what is distributed ledger technology we all know that ledgers are the systems by which people establish who owns what and owes what to whom yeah who owns what and owes what to whom now distributed ledger technology distributes the ledger among all those using it putting the responsibility to maintain and validate in the hands of all stakeholders instead of third parties like banks and institutions the result of this is decentralized data registry system where transactions are instant transparent and incorruptible okay distributed under distributed ledger technology the primary feature or you can see the the first benefit out of distributed ledger technology is the decentralized platforms and marketplaces the second key point is self sovereign identity so i have also written ssi1 and ssi2 ssi2 is for is for the cab and ssi1 is for the charging station now the self sovereign identity is the digital identity of the devices similar to what we have like our uh, human identity each human being in india we have aadhaar right we have uid our unique identification number we have pan cards we have uh, identity numbers which is unique to us which is unique to uh, uh, each and every human being right similarly self sovereign identity is going to be a digital identity of the digitized asset ssi is going to make it possible for people as well as for the things for the things and the people who own the things right so for the people and for the things to own and control their own digital identities as of now even though we have our login ids we have our you know um Uh, IDs on several uh, social media uh, platforms, but
but originally these identities we we have the privacy um uh, we ha we we have the privacy standards the, these companies needs to ensure that our data is not um, leaked because uh, it's it's what data privacy laws mandates them to do uh, but uh, then also these uh, our digital imprints, you know, our digital identity is not completely our own. There is someone somewhere sitting who can easily access our digital identity because it is stored with a third party. Now what self-sovereign identity would enable? It would enable, it is going to enable the uh, things, the digitized things or assets and people or individual to own their digital identities and control them so nobody else will have the same SSI and nobody else can extract more than what I permit them to extract from my SSI yeah so from my SSI from my self sovereign identity only that much information can be extracted or can be exchanged of which I will give permission for. So think of it as a secure digital wallet which is holding cryptographic proofs of things like your age or your citizenship which is issued and validated by trusted bodies. Okay, For things it is for things to be able to use the platforms and services the missing link yeah so the the decentralized platforms and marketplaces and now they have the self sovereign identity also now the missing link is the currency okay they have the ssi so the cab with ssi2 knows the uh, charging station as it uh, via its SSI, through its SSI, the uh, cab is um, knowing uh, the charging station. Now, the, the transaction, you know, that, that uh, continuous micropayments that are possible due to blockchains or cryptocurrency, in, in simple words, cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency or blockchains are going to allow the bulk of continuous micropayments because bulk why we are saying bulk because the micro payments needs to be done my, uh, continuously we have seen that the moment the micro payments will be stopped the transaction will be en ended the charging station will stop charging the cap okay so the micro payments needs to be continuous and that and needs to be done in bulk so the cryptocurrency make these bulky micro payments or payment streams to be costless they are costless because there are no intermediaries there are no inter financially financial intermediary to um, to to make those payments it's not that i am writing down the check and then uh, depositing that check to the bank and then the other person is is cashing the check it's not like that it's just a person to person transaction peer to peer transaction um, the the person who is uh, getting the benefit is directly trans uh, is transferring the uh, payments to the mm, mm, in the form of uh, blockchain or cryptocurrency to the person who is providing the uh, service now uh, this exchange between the cab and the charging station is completely decentralized uh, economic cooperation now this is the most exciting benefit of uh, economy of things uh, of course oh i'm sorry uh, we haven't arrived at uh, arrived at economy of things but yeah so in this scenario if everything is possible if if uh, the decentralized platforms and marketplace are there and self sovereign identity are there and cryptocurrency is there then everything is possible then the result of this is decentralized economic cooperation the cooperation 
exist cooperation between the cab and the charging station exist till the incentives are in action unlike the economic cooperation unlike the economic cooperation among humans the conventional cooperation strategy are a uh, carrot and stick strategy grim trigger strategy tit for tit strategy unlike these strategies these strategies are not re required here okay only incentive matters incentive being the continuous micro payments the cooperation between the cab and the charging station exists till the payment stream is flowing from the cab to the charging station the moment the uh, payment stream is, uh, is is stopped or is interrupted the transaction will stop okay so th this this whole scenario this the, the entire process here the use of in internet of things combined with distributed ledger technology is leading us to the decentralized economic cooperation where there is no requirement of trust relations you don't have to uh, the buyer don't have to you know build uh, a trust relation with a se seller step by step it's not time consuming you don't have to spend much time to build on trust you don't have to spend time on negotiations or bargaining it's not a case of in imperfect information there is n there there is no imperfect information the only thing we need is continuous incentive continuous flow of incentive to maintain economic cooperation this is the only requirement here the continuous flow of incentives to maintain decentralized economic cooperation and the blockchain technology or in simpler word cryptocurrency will make sure that the um, incentives are continuous continuously flow yeah so now what economy of things is the very subject of this video was ec economy of things now we have arrived at that point economy of thing is internet of things plus distributed ledger technology when you combine internet of things with distributed ledger technology you will get economy of things so in internet of things under internet of things what we have seen that the physical assets are digitized yeah the iot is able to turn the physical assets into participants in real time global digital markets in real time global digital markets they are the participants the physical assets are the participants they can participate when this is combined with distributed ledger technology what we'll get we'll get economy of things in which the machines sensors and vehicles etc and other digitized assets will have their own ssi they will have their own ssi granting them sole ownership of their identities and full control over how their data is shared since ssi uh, grants them full control over the data howsoever they want to share it the things the things which are digitized howsoever they want to share they can share they can use it iot enables assets in the physical world to be searched managed and monetized in real time liquid marketplace thus liquefaction of the physical world due to iot this is only due to the iot only due to the iot it is possible that the the assets in the physical world can be searched they can be searched because they are on the same network they are interconnected all the assets are interconnected so they can be searched and they can be managed and they can be monetized they can be indexed searched and trad traded this is uh, what liquefaction of the physical world means so economy of things meaning liquefaction of the physical world 
I hope you have understood what economy of things is. Now, um, the economy of things, of course, is uh, made up of or it's the result of Internet of Things and distributed ledger technology. Now, the, the primary risk with IoT is data privacy and data leak and security risk. But since under economy of things due to SSI, due to SSI, each digitized physical asset has sole control over its own digital identity and data. So it can identify and verify the SSI of other digitized physical asset, which require requiring exchange of only necessary data. So this does not require centralized databases, making it privacy oriented and secure process, meaning minimal probability of data leaks. Due to the presence of distributed ledger technology, due to the the, the combination of Internet of Things and distributed ledger technology uh, enables the uh, actually reduces the security, the data leak uh, problem and security risk because due to SSI and control over their own data, the devices, the digitized physical assets or the devices or uh, would not be exchanging more than required data. So uh, the case we took the cab and the, um, uh, the, the cab and the charging station. So in, in that example, the cab is going to exchange the data, say uh, its SSI uh, details, like that's uh, identification number sort of identification number and SSI number and uh, it, its requirement okay and the charging station is only going to share the uh, uh, the the, the uh, it's only going to exchange uh, or, or provide the uh, power uh, to the cap so there is no unnecessary exchange of the data. It's not that the cab is providing uh, or leaking the data on the, uh, the, the, the person who has hired it. And it's not that the charging station is providing the data of the owner's home location or, as, or you know, wealth uh, data and uh, wealth information and everything. Yeah, so uh, economy of things um, is an improvement on Internet of Things um, if we consider data privacy and data leak and security risk problem then economy of thing is the improvement on Internet of Things because it is uh, it is uh, combined with Internet of Things is combined with distributed ledger technology okay now um, we have now understood economy of things but let me tell you economy of things is uh, is is uh, an aspiration of humankind uh, which promises uh, solutions to many economic problem it has a very great potential to uh, a, a gr very great potential and it could be a good uh, field of research a very rich field of research a new field uh, of research for uh, us uh, uh, economists and, and other researcher, but uh, economy of things uh, is something which uh, we need to work uh, hard on because it's just uh, an idea, it's just, uh, just an aspiration or just uh, you can say it's, it's, it's a milestone that a globalized world has set for itself and and to to taste the fruits of the economy of things we we first have to overcome the challenges many challenges for internet of things to to uh, to get to the economy of things we need to first tackle the challenges of the internet of things uh, five main challenges of internet of things are um, seamless uh, interoperability of the services and uh, scalable connectivity is there then there is lack of structured uh, data and technical capabilities that's a, a very uh, big uh, challenge uh, for us 
Uh, and then there is a highly trustworthy value chains that exhibit a low complexity and cost. And the biggest challenge for Internet of Things is the user privacy and security from uh, social, legal, and uh, cultural perspectives. Um, so uh, these challenges, uh, the challenge of privacy, you know, the challenge of privacy uh, can be met by the effective and uh, secure use of uh, P2P, uh, P2P meaning peer-to-peer -peer blockchains. Um, this can be done, but uh, again, the economy of things is something which um, which is just an idea. It's it's just an idea, and we need to work mm, on it. We need to work on it uh, if if we are able to uh, if we are able to you know um, build something uh, something of economy of things then then i'm sure that uh, it is going to it is uh, going to change our understanding the current understanding of the economic world and uh, the economy of things, uh, apart from the peer-to-peer -peer blockchains and the, the use of the digital ledger technology, we also have big data and artificial intelligence with us. The role of the big data and artificial intelligence can also not be ignored. So, big data, artificial intelligence, and the um, the, uh, the 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 P two P blockchain uh, technology, uh, we all these three and um, many other uh, should be used to work or, or should should be used to develop uh, on uh, economy of things. And once it is developed, I'm uh, sure that uh, economic world will. Uh, surely be transformed uh, completely. Uh, that's it uh, from my side. Uh, I hope you have uh, now have some uh, understanding of uh, what economy of things really is, and uh, you. Uh, I am hoping that this video ha is going to help you in your uh, future uh, research. Thank you.